Hi, and welcome to Across the Desk. Well, this week we're going to talk about the Oklahoma Freedom Caucus. And if that sounds familiar, well, yeah, it is. There is a Freedom Caucus in the halls of the U.S. Congress, and that's kind of a take on that. Not real big on originality, conservatives are, but we're going to talk about who is in the Oklahoma Freedom Caucus, what they do, what they plan to do, and how that may impact us this week on Across the Desk. So some legislatures came out the other day on the steps of the Oklahoma legislature and said, hey, we have an Oklahoma Freedom Caucus. Now, right now, they have about three members that are going to be there next session. There are a few others, but they're term limited and they won't be back. So right now, we're dealing with really three members. Of course, the chair is Shane Jett. And he says, oh, there's more members, but we're not going to tell you who they are yet, mostly because I don't think they have any. They're really small. And when you learn about who it is, you're going to understand why they're small. Because here we go. Who's in the Freedom Caucus? Well, right now, the people that are going to be back next year, we know of, is Shane Jett, who's going to be the chair. He's senator. Senator Dusty Devers, who's a really green and new guy. And Representative Jim Olson, who is a really big wacko in the representative side of the legislature. Anyway, those are the main three. And they came out last week saying, hey, Oklahoma Freedom Caucus. So exactly who are these guys? Well, Shane Jett's been in there for a while. He even ran for governor and even lieutenant governor, didn't win or anything. He's very divisive in a lot of his policies and politics, even amongst other Republicans. And that's kind of why they put this together, because really one of the things that the Freedom Caucus has done is go after Republicans for not being conservative enough. And that's pretty much their whole plan. Hey, we're going to actually go after Republicans that aren't conservative enough. So you pull these guys like Dusty Devers and Olson together for a specific reason that those guys would be in there. Well, one, Dusty Devers, you don't know who that is, Senator Dusty Devers, he put in all these bills last session. None of them even made it out of committee. He was so mad about it that he filibustered on the floor of the Senate so nobody could get bills through. So this is just how petty and immature Dusty Devers actually is when it comes to doing his job as a legislature. He doesn't work well with others, obviously. He doesn't know how to work well with others. He's all big time. He's probably one of the biggest Christian nationalists and probably all around biggest threat to our freedoms, our First Amendment and 14th Amendment freedoms and protections in the state of Oklahoma. He absolutely is. He absolutely calls you evil if you're not a Christian. And what do we do with evil people? Well, we need to exterminate them. This is actually what he said on his Exeter feed, or Zitter, we call it anymore, X and Twitter put together. So he talks about eliminating people who aren't Christians because, well, they're evil, obviously, if they don't believe in take Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, which is another weird issue. He's all about kings and lords and stuff like that, and we don't have monarchy rule in the United States of America. We even have provision in the USA Constitution that says, we don't give out royal titles, and here he is wanting to give out royal and noble titles. But anyway, going on with who's in it and what they're about, they're all really big Christian nationalists. Even Shane Jett is a big-time Christian nationalist. Olson, big-time Christian nationalist. I mean, he's the guy who tried to get the Ten Commandments on the grounds of the Capitol, which didn't work. Maybe got thrown out by the Supreme Court. He's also the guy that wants to allow you to marry off your 10-year-old to 30-year-olds in the name of religious freedom. I actually had a bill a few years ago to do that. Didn't go anywhere, obviously. Sounds kind of creepy. And he's also the guy who wanted to pass, no kidding, paddling disability, disabled kids in schools who may not understand why they're being punished in the first place, thinks they should just need a good smacking. And anyway, so now he's put together to see if we can have a study. So they're actually doing a study on the effects of paddling disabled kids, which this is where Dusty Deaver's values are. We need to paddle these disability kids. They need to be paddled when they get out of line, even if they don't understand it because, you know, Jesus. I don't know how he gets there, but that's exactly what he does. And so that's the weirdest things about, like, Jim Olson. 
I mean, Jim Olson is really kind of a wacky guy. I don't know that he's as dangerous quite as Dusty Devers is, but he has a lot of wacky bills and a lot of wacky things he's said, and he definitely wants everyone to be a Christian, no matter if you aren't. Violate your First Amendment, because that's just how these guys see it. All of them, really. The three guys I'm going to talk about. Shane Jett, same way. Wants to do that stuff. So we have also Dusty Devers. Dusty Devers, Olsen, Shane Jett. And Dusty Devers, the amazing thing about him, like I said earlier, had all these bills go in. None of them made out of committee because he doesn't know how to pull co coalitions together. Really, Jim Olson too. Jim Olson, since he's been in the legislature, has put in over 60 bills, and only six of them have even passed. Six of them. And after he had to rewrite and do some other things to get other co-authors on. Otherwise, none of his stuff gets out anywhere. And this is really what's got these guys frustrated and you know, wanting to put this caucus together because, you see... They're not good politicians. A good politician knows how to work with others. They know how to build coalitions and know how to get things done for the people of their district, of their area that they're supposed to be representing. These guys don't know how to do that, obviously, as their record of getting stuff through committee and even the floor of their respected chambers is actually quite poor. They're not very good at it. So... That's why they put together this Freedom Caucus, because they think they're going to get together and put pressure, especially on other Republicans, to do their bidding, to do their will, and force their bills through no matter what. Because even as Shane Jett said, he came out and said on the steps the other day, hey, this is about putting in conservative principles and values by any means necessary. That's kind of a scary way to say that. Any means necessary, this is going to be conservative. We're going to make sure it's all conservative. No liberal bills even get heard or even talked about or anybody else. Democrats, if you got a bill, we're not even going to get out of committee because our stuff didn't. You shouldn't. We're a red state and we want to keep it that way. So this is where Shane Jett is. He wants to keep us conservative. He wants to get rid of the 14th and First Amendment for anybody who's a Democrat or identifies as liberal and force their will upon the people of Oklahoma, you know, no matter what. And that's pretty much where we're at. They talk about low taxes. And, and the funniest thing is they talk about we, we want less government, less government, but yet they want this. Christian nationalism, big government, to come in and tell everybody what they're going to do, who they're going to pray to, what they're going to learn, what they're going to wear, what they're going to say, who they're going to love. This That's really a big government thing. So he's trying to spin it. I see that. And they keep talking about these wonderful conservative values. But they've got a problem here. you got Senator Nathan Dom, who was there on the steps with him, going, yeah, I support this, even though he's term limited, he's out. He's also the chair of the Oklahoma GOP right now. But before he became the chair of the Oklahoma GOP, he's also the guy that went after Kamala Harris with rude sex jokes and said, hey, everybody just needs to calm down. These are just jokes. These are his values, after all, telling jokes about women and how they got ahead in life are just funny. That's conservative values. That's his values. And they're going to put themselves with this guy who's done these things that has shown what their values really are like and then come out and think that they're all pristine and everything else and that it's conservative values where we want to go. Look at look at Nathan Dahlman and what he said about Kamala Harris. So that's what we have with this Oklahoma Freedom Caucus. Oklahoma Freedom Caucus. And it's kind of a weird play on words, isn't it? It's kind of like saying Patriot Act. You know, the Patriot Act that stepped on everybody's first, fifth, and 14th Amendment rights. Maybe even eighth and twelfth. Who knows, right? So, and everybody today is like, man, this Patriot Act steps way too far. We're just going to collect everybody's data, Fourth Amendment violation. We're going to incriminate people and, and have them incriminate themselves, a Fifth Amendment violation. And then we're going to go after anybody who speaks out or says anything, First Amendment violation and retaliation. So there you go, Patriot Act, but it's not so patriot -y anymore. And that's kind of what we got the Freedom Caucus, because they're not really about freedom. They're about controlling women. 
They're about controlling your kids. They're about controlling your religious views. They're about controlling your speech if it doesn't align with theirs. It's exactly where they are. They're about a tiered constitutional system, a caste system, where religious leaders and politicians are at the top and everybody else down from there. And depending on where you are on the rungs, it's how much rights, freedoms, and protection of law you get. They absolutely believe this. When you've got nutbags like Senator Dusty Deavers out there saying that we need to eliminate people that don't believe in Jesus because if they don't believe in Jesus, well, that equates to them being evil. And that's exactly where he is on these things. This is exactly where Jim Olson is because I guess he thinks that if you're disabled, well, then you got the devil in you and we got to beat it out of you. So that's why he's having this study done about beating on disabled kids. That's 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 just sickening. That's 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 probably about as sickening as saying, you know, I think you should be able to marry your ten year old off in the name of religious freedom to some thirty year old guy. Yeah. He had that too. We're going back to that. But anyway, so we have this Freedom Caucus thing working. We'll see what happens. We'll see how much pressure they can actually put on, because right now all I see is three guys who are frustrated that they can't get their bills through even committee to make it to the floor of the respective chambers, trying to make some noise to see if they can bully some people around. And that's basically all we have here. Because the other guys that say, yeah, we're part of this caucus, guess what? They're term limited. It doesn't matter. They're out of there. So we'll see. We'll have to see what happens. Next session starts middle of January. We'll see if they can actually pull anything off and make any noise about it. Anyway, this is Across the Desk, and we're going to see you guys next week. <laughs>